In the last video, we looked at finding the nth roots of unity. In this video, we're going to find the nth roots of a complex number. Please do watch that video as lots of the learning that we're going to use in this is involved in that one. So we're asked to solve the following equations, expressing your answer for z in the form r cos theta plus i sine theta, where theta is between negative and positive pi. It's important to get an idea of this interval here, because this is going to determine our values of k. Uh, which one should we go for? Let's go for this one right here. So if we now put these uh, 2 plus 2i on a an argon diagram, we would see that we would have it somewhere just here. So we'd have now 2 plus 2i. If we wanted to express this now in polar form, i.e. r cos theta plus i sine theta, what we would need is r. r is given to be the absolute value of z, or the root of x squared plus y squared. So we could say that r was going to be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. So we could say that r was either root 8, 2 root 2, or 8 to the 1 half. If we wanted a principal argument, the principal argument now is given where theta is equal to the inverse tangent of negative, uh, of inverse tangent of y of x. Okay, so inverse tangent of y of x. So what we'd have is theta would be equal to the inverse tangent now of 2 over 2, which of course is 1. So we can say that theta, the principal argument, is pi by 4 radians. So what we could do now is write this as z cubed is going to be equal to root 8 or 8 to the half if you want to put 8 to the half and then what we're going to have is cos of pi by 4 plus i sine of pi by 4 and what we're going to have are subsequent roots at intervals of 2 pi radians so we could write this now as z cubed is equal to 8 to the 1 half and then we can have cos of a principal value plus multiples of 2 pi radians. And we will call that multiple k. And then we have plus i sine of pi by 4 radians plus the multiples of 2 pi. So that's where we wind up. What we're now going to do is express z. What we want to do is take the cube root of both sides. If we look right here, what we're going to have is 8 to the 1 over 6. If I take the cube root, we've got 8 to the 1 over 6. We could rewrite this. 8 is 2 cubed. 2 cubed to the 1 over 6 is just 2 to the half, or root 2. So just basic rules of indices. Taking the cube root, what we would have is 8 to the 1 6, which I'm going to write now as root 2. Then we would have cos of pi by 4 plus 2 pi k. Now, plus i sine of pi by 4 plus 2 pi k and then all of this now is going to be to the one third power the cube root using de Moivre's theorem we can now say that z is going to be equal to root 2 then we can have cos and now employing the one third we can have cos of pi by 12 plus 2 pi k by 3 plus i sine of pi by 12 plus 2 pi k by 3. Now, that is the form that we want. So this is what we're going to be working with. So let's just look at this right here. If you wish, if you wish now, you can uh, combine this fraction right here. I often do. Kind of sometimes makes my working easier. So what I could say is pi, putting it all over 12, what we'd have now and again you can factor a pi out if you want plus 8 pi k we're interested in solutions from negative to positive pi that means that my value of k is going to be taken of from zero and also from positive one and negative one if we were asked to go between zero and two pi i would just have these as zero one and two so let's start now. What we'll say is z1, and we will use k is equal to 0. What we will get now is root 2. And if I sub in 0 here, or even 0 here, seeing it here is equally easier, as easy, we're going to get cos of pi by 12 plus i sine of pi by 12. 
Now, that is when k is equal to 0. And we will call this z1. z2 is going to be now root 2. We're going to take k equal to 1. If I put k equal to 1, I've got pi plus 8 pi, which is going to be 9 pi by 12. And you might want to show this in your workings. 9 pi by 12 is going to give us 3 pi by 4. So we get cos of 3 pi by 4 plus i sine of 3 pi by 4. So that is when k is equal to 1. z3, the third root, root 2, and we will take now k to be negative 1. If I take this to be negative 1, pi minus 8 pi is going to give me minus 7 pi by 12. So all we do now is sub that in and we get cos of negative 7 pi by 12 plus i sine of negative 7 pi by 12. And that is where now k is equal to negative 1. And we've now found our three roots of 2 plus 2i. Often you might be asked to put these on an argon diagram, which is going to be no bother at all. We can just put these up here. So one of them, let's do the first one, pi by 12, is going to look something like that. That looks about pi by 12, give or take. Then the next one, 3 pi by 4, so nice and straightforward, 3 pi by 4. And then the next one, negative 7 pi by 12. So that's going to look something, again, give or take, like so. And these all have a modulus of root 2. So we can say that this one is going to be now z uh, Z1, this one is going to be Z2, and this one is going to be Z3. And those are just expressed now on there. So there we go, that's uh, a brief worked example. Hopefully if you've seen the video prior to this, it will make some form of sense. So as stated, we needed to find that between... Um, negative and positive pi, which is why I chose these. If you're going, and you can adjust at the end, I suppose, using positive values, uh, but that should be it. Uh, just need to finish with that, and that all looks good.